Hello, I'm Brad. I'm an active duty hospital corpsman. I'm going to show you the proper steps for collecting blood from an identified donor for a casualty and hemorrhagic shock requiring a life-saving blood transfusion on the battlefield. Consider body substance isolation. If a combat lifesaver is available, direct them to assist. Gather equipment needed, a constricting band, antiseptic swab or wipe, 450 to 500 milliliter blood collection bag, permanent marking pin, blood bag label, 4x4 gauze dressing, and 3 inch tape. Confirm the donor's blood type. If not previously documented in a unit blood program, use an Elden card to determine the donor's blood type. Now have the donor sit or recline and inspect the veins to choose the arm before application of the band if possible. Do not collect blood from a donor that is standing upright as some donors transiently lose consciousness during venipuncture. Apply a constricting band at least two inches above the intended venipuncture site. Identify the vein that will be used. The vein should be large enough to sustain at least a 16 gauge needle. Now disinfect the intended vein of puncture site with antiseptic swabs or wipes such as iodine or chlorhexidine. Be sure to allow the disinfectant to dry before vena puncture. Next, remove the blood bag with the attached tubing and the needle from the package and place them next to the casualty. Keep the collection bag clean and insulated from the ground and below the level of the donor's heart. Clamp the tubing 12 to 18 inches from the needle. Apply one of the following field expedient donor bag volume measure tools. A beaded cable tie marked at six and a half inches around the center of the bag or a zip tie marked at six and a half inches around the center of the bag, or clamp the bottom of the bag with a folded overlap of one to one and a half inches, or use a parachute 550 cord at 10 inches wrapped around the center of the bag so ends meet. Now, twist out the cap of the 16 gauge needle. Insert the needle bevel up at a 15 to 30 degree angle through the skin. Remind the donor not to bend their arm as the needle is in the vein and not a flexible catheter. Once the blood is visualized in the collection line, unclamp the tubing. Visualize to ensure the blood is flowing into the blood collection bag. Once the blood is flowing into the bag, remove the constricting band from the donor's arm and ask them to open and close their fist every 10 to 15 seconds to keep the blood flowing. Next, secure the needle and tubing in place with tape. Once the blood is flowing into the collection bag, you should rock the bag back and forth every 60 to 90 seconds to mix the blood with the anticoagulants in the blood collection bag. Continually monitor the donor and the donated blood throughout the donation process. Assess the donor for signs and symptoms of blood loss, sweating, pallor, complaints of feeling lightheaded, nausea, etc. Assess the venipuncture site for signs of hematoma. If blood flow into the bag stops, you may need to reposition the needle. Watch the bag to ensure it does not overfill. Determine when the bag of blood is full using one of the field expedient methods mentioned earlier. Note, the beaded cable tie, zip tie, and clamping the bottom of the bag restricts the bag from filling beyond required capacity. The parachute 550 cord is cut at 10 inches and wrapped around the center of the bag so ends meet, indicating that the bag is full. Once the bag is full, clamp off the line. Now remove the tape holding the tubing and needle in place. Place a 4x4 gauze dressing over the venipuncture site while removing the needle and have the donor hold pressure over the site. Release the clamp and allow the blood in the tubing to flow into the collection bag. Adjust the clamp to the end of the tubing to allow enough tubing to tie overhand knots. Tie one overhand knot as close to the blood bag as possible, ensuring proper control of the needle as you tie. Then, tie a second overhand knot closest to the needle so when the needle is cut off, it will have minimal tubing attached while still maintaining proper control of the needle. Once you have both knots completed, couple of the knot closest to the needle and dispose of the needle and tubing in a sharps container as appropriate. Ensure the blood collection bag label is filled out with the correct donor information and placed in the collection bag. Ensure the correct ABO blood type yeah. is annotated. And ensure the collection date and time and name of the medic collecting the blood are annotated. Fresh whole blood should be transfused within 68 hours of collection. Monitor the donor after blood donation is complete. Ask the donor to remain laying down or sitting for a few minutes. Inspect the venipuncture site. If it is not bleeding, apply a bandage to the site. If it is bleeding, apply a pressure bandage. You should ensure that the donor can stand up without dizziness or lightheadedness. Like Lastly, document all treatment on a DD Form 1380 Teacher Will See casualty card and attach it to the casualty.